Uh, let's take a look together at uh, Scripture, and we're going to look again through the book of Philippians. And this uh, begins, uh, you know, we've been four weeks in the first chapter, and we're still chugging right along. So here, here's a little bit more of Philippians uh, chapter 1, beginning the second part of verse, uh, verse 18. Um, yes, and I will continue to rejoice, for I know that through your prayers and God's provision of the Spirit of Jesus Christ, what has happened to me will turn out for my deliverance. Eagerly expect and hope that I will in no way be ashamed, but will have sufficient courage so that now, as always, Christ will be exalted in my body, whether by life or by death. For to me, to live is Christ, and to die is gain. If I'm to go on living in the body, this will mean that mean fruitful labor for me, yet what shall I choose? I do not know. I am torn between the two. I desire to depart and be with Christ, which is better by far, but it is more necessary for you that I remain in the body. Convinced of this, I know that I will remain and will continue with all of you for your progress and joy in the faith, so that through my being with you, Again, your boasting in Christ Jesus will abound on account of me. The wealth of rejoicing. Uh, the key word isn't in the rejoicing. The key word is in everything. And so let's, let's take a quick look. Wealth in continued rejoicing. I know that's just a statement. Uh, I don't know where you're at. I, I know there's elements in which we say, oh, man, I, I just rejoice in, in certain things. So off the top, you know, kids well-behaved, kids sleeping. Those, those two kind of go hand in hand. And, and what couple hasn't looked over their sleeping children and, and think, oh, how blessed am I till 5 o'clock in the morning? And then you're going, why have you done this to me, Lord? And, and so there, there's wealth and continued rejoicing, though, not, not just in, in some of those times. This introduction is about the wealth of continued rejoicing. There's something about the ability that God has given us in order to be rejoiceful, be enjoying each element in its own way. And even if there's pain in that element, Paul says, man, I'm going to continue to rejoice. So let's look at this. Yes, I will continue to rejoice. So as part of the introduction, um, I'm going to introduce this term will or volition. I, I endeavor, I try, I will myself to rejoice, and I will continue to do that as part of my lifestyle. Now, there's a reason for that, and the reason we'll walk through in just a moment. But this element of possibility that I, Rob Hayes, insert your name there, can have a lifestyle of rejoicing. Now, I don't know about you, but that to many people is just going to sound weird. What kind of crazy person does that? Well, the kind of crazy person that allows us to hope through all things. This idea of hope uh, and rejoicing and giving thanks in everything because this is the will of God, understand that, that this is the kind of lifestyle God has intended for you. Yes, and I will continue to rejoice. God goes, yeah. It's exactly why you're here, to experience the abundant life now. Now, that doesn't mean that there's not pain. There is pain. But let me remind you, even in mourning, we mourn as those who have hope. Not as those who have no hope. And so even in the pain of mourning, it's different. Believers, you and I are built differently. We have a different capacity. We have a capacity to hope. Hope, by the way, is one of the characteristics of God. Hope. Faith, hope, love. 
It's part of, part of what makes us believers. Hope is not, by the way, just a verb. It's not like I'm hopeful. I'm going to try and hope. No, no. Hope is actually more of a noun. Something that you possess in Christ Jesus. I have hope. I am hope because of Christ Jesus. People who look at me will see hope. Isn't that interesting? And yes, I will continue to rejoice, Paul says. Let's look at the first element here of what we bankroll. Paul has very interesting ways of talking about this. And so I will, I will hope. And, you know, as, as we have looked at this, Yes, and I will continue to rejoice. And then it goes, verse 19, For I know that through your prayers and God's provision of the Spirit of Jesus Christ, what has happened to me will turn out for my deliverance. So this hope is built on something. So let's, let's interject into my circumstance this idea that there is prayer going up for me and there is God's provision going up for me. Okay. Rejoicing gets interjected, gets interwoven into my current circumstance. There's something that becomes part of the fabric of my being because what? Because people are praying for me so that there's this interjection of the Holy Spirit in and through my life because there are others investing in me. They're bankrolling me. I am Christ. Nothing will separate that from me. Those, those who have believed in his name understand who he is and have accepted him as their Lord and Savior, that is established. What will continue to be established is by the inclusion of a body of believers that are praying and investing in me, they are interjecting into my circumstance. There's not a circumstance that you should not be afraid or that you should be afraid to ask people to pray for you in. If you want to just read the prayer chain out of this church. Now, you only can share what you're comfortable in sharing. But people are becoming more and more comfortable about sharing very cool specific things that they would like answered. They maybe didn't start off that way, but if you read and get on that prayer chain, you will soon see that this body cares and interjects into people's lives. And Paul says that makes a difference. Paul says the difference is that people now, it's not just me, it's not just what I can work up in, turn of, in terms of trying to be hopeful. No, I can be hopeful, I can rejoice because of what's being poured into my life. Prayer makes that difference. Why? Because God makes that difference. Because when you pray, it's not just saying words, you're going to a God who acts. You're going to the one who can do stuff. And you're going to one who can do stuff that you can't do, that can make sense out of circumstances that make no sense, and so you can rejoice, and people will think you're crazy. What is more unique today than somebody whose lifestyle is rejoicing in the middle of all the stuff that's going on? Are you weird or something? Yeah, you are. And they better get used to it. Because I will continue, knowing what I know now and knowing who's impacting my life, uh, I, I will continue to be the crazy one. Make no sense to you. But I'll tell you what makes sense to me is I love Jesus and people who love Jesus are pouring, interjecting into my circumstance, as tough as that might be. They work towards my deliverance. Paul says, and those things that you're praying for are working now towards delivering me from, from what? From anything that would come against the spread of the gospel. Delivering me from anything that move against the kingdom advancement. 
So even though I personally might be suffering, the kingdom is gloriously moving ahead. Why? Because you are interjecting into my life. But pastor, I only have the gift of hospitality. Really. The team is taking somewhat of a sabbatical from providing coffee and desserts and setting up tables because they need a rest. But you take any major element out of a church and you will feel it. Today we've got a reprieve. Next week when the kids and parents are here, you're going to have to have fellowship with people you don't know outside of coffee. Whoa, how is that possible? The Lord will give you strength. Let water work it. Go to the fountain, get some water. But people, there's nothing keeping us from enjoying the fellowship of other people, making new friends, allowing yourself to take five more minutes in the foyer. Make, maybe it spills over into the other room. Great! God is enabling us. And so whatever circuits towards our deliverance from whatever gives me courage to say hi to new people. Hmm. No, that's not what Paul's saying, really. It works to give him courage. It works, it works the prayer and the Holy Spirit can, can allow things to happen in our church's lives that are only supernatural. Friday night's coming up. Young people will be coming onto our property Getting, getting, getting used to our leadership, getting used to how we do things. It's a new, it's a new day. We're praying that, that the parents of, of those kids will have younger kids that can experience the love of our, our children's church. Lord, I need courage to continue, and so the Holy Spirit then embeds us with that. The Holy Spirit allows us to move in ways that we could not normally move, do things we would not normally think of. I have a very good friend. Uh, he's actually was the chairman, uh, the lead of our fellowship's foreign mission board, spent many years in France, now Congo and various other areas. He's working worldwide. Um, speaking to thousands and thousands of people. When we were young people at Willowdale Baptist Church, we had to give our testimony. And I went and gave my testimony, and then he stood up and lied. <laughs> he stood up, and the crowd got to him. And, and he made stuff up that never happened in his life. And the, and the congregation was there, ooh, wow. You know, way to go. So... So Richard comes back into the back, into the back uh, screened area where we, we sort of hid when we weren't speaking. And he said, I, I raised my right hand. Yes, what do you do? I will never speak in public again. <laughs> it was a sworn oath that he's broken thousands and thousands of times. Lord, give us courage. Stuff that we thought was impossible, not really. Maybe uncomfortable, but not impossible. And whether by life or death, Lord, exalt me. Imagine that. Before we go to point, point two, we just got to look at this thought that, that whether by life or by death, that Lord, you might be exalted. Can you imagine? And then the conversation goes to, well, what's better? Well, let's look at that. Verse 21, for me to live, for to me to live is Christ, and to die is gain. If I'm to go on living in the body, this will mean fruitful labor for me. Yet what shall I choose? Well, let's take a look at this choice. The bankroll of spiritual reason. So here's the spiritual reason, and it's not like any other reasoning. To live is Christ, to die is gain. So let's dissect that a little bit. To live is Christ, meaning that I live in Christ, and to live in Christ means fruitful labor. That's what in this context that means. If I'm to go on living, and I'm a Christian, then what it means is, it's fruitful labor for me. I get the best possible opportunity. 
I get to serve Jesus Christ. That's why you're still alive, by the way. That, I, I can't think of any other reason why you should keep living. If to die is gain, why are you still here? To serve Jesus Christ. Fruitful labor for me. And so, so the question is, well, Lord, what's my fruitful labor? Well, good prayer question. Ask God. Don't, don't be asking me. I mean, I can give you some clues based on some of the characteristics you exhibit. And, and I can certainly put you through a spiritual gift survey. But, but if you're any age at all, you've probably been through a dozen of those. And, and so the question is, so, so what is my labor? What is it? Well, you know, that, that comes from, from practicing different things and, and, and finding out where fruit is found. And, and so where you're bearing fruit, that's probably where your gift set is. And th there is a sense of joy in, in laboring for Christ. So why we say labor, um, my experience has been, has been an absolute blast, an exhilarating adventure. Lab labor is something that's probably used, uh, not, not that it's not true, it's accurate, but folks, the feelings you get, the experiences you get, stop right there, stop and say, Lord, I want that, I want to be in Christ, I want to be used of you, I, I, I'd like to know what fruitful labor is, and, and I don't care what age you're at, Lord, make me fruitful. Now, allow me that privilege and that exhilaration of seeing lives changed, which is, by the way, what ministry is about. If you go through the gifts, you'll notice that it's all about allowing people to change their lives through the power of Jesus Christ and allowing Jesus Christ to use you in that endeavor. Whew. Nothing like it. To live is Christ, great. To die is game, not so great. Well, on the surface, not so great. As you think about it a little bit, and so this spiritual reasoning, if, if to live is Christ, to die is game, why? Because being in the very presence of Jesus Christ is superior. Now, you're not there yet, so we're opting for number one. But while we're going through this fruitful labor stuff, understand this, to die is better. It's a delicate subject these days because people are opting to die early. It's a problem. It's not just a problem, it's a serious problem. Because many, 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 many people are dying without Christ at their own volition. So being with Christ is superior. To die for Christians means something very, very different. It means while I'm alive, I serve, and when God says it's over, I'm with him. That's the simplicity of it. That's the power of it. To be with Christ. That's what we have to look forward to. So Paul goes, hey, this is the reasoning. I guess I got to make a choice. And if I had to make a choice... In other words, if I have you pray for anything, here's what he's having people pray for. Pray that I might be profitable and I might have fruitful labor. So let's look at what convinced them of this. Convinced of this, I know that I will remain. So because of his spiritual logic, I know that I will remain and I will continue with all of you for your progress and joy in the faith. So that through my being with you again, your boasting in Christ Jesus will abound on account of me. So let's look at this. The bankroll of earthly investment. The people choice. There's the Christ choice, I want to be with you. But then there's the people choice. And the people choice is you guys. The people choice is those who you know. The people choice is so that those you know may be impacted by Jesus Christ. And I don't know who God has put you beside. Uh, who you're married to, who your kids are, who your work associates are, uh, who your neighbors are. I, I, have, no, I have no idea. I, I've got a clue with some of you. But the people choice. If I'm going to be here, it's because of 
them. And I get to be because of them because people are praying with me. So get in a prayer circle. Get in a small group. Get somewhere where people can pray actively for you. And get to know your neighbors and friends and family through prayer. And get close enough to somebody that you can say, Rob, I've got this guy. He's an idiot. His name is Frank. Is there any Frank, sir? (laughs) That wouldn't be of the Lord. That would be an accident. So Lord, 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 help me with them. And and those who are friends and participating in the gospel with me, yeah, you can pray for Frank, now that I know it's a safe word. You can pray for him. We're here because of the people's choice. If we're here, it's because of people you know and God has put you into. Bankroll of earthly investment, the people's choice, progress in the faith. You are here using your gifts so that so that they who you know will progress in the faith. That they will grow mature. And that's why as a church, in our mission statement, it's all about discipling people to a bigger understanding and experience with Jesus Christ. It's not always going to be those words, but but discipleship certainly is. Discipleship with everybody at every age, kids all the way through to my age and beyond. We are here so that we may grow and that our faith in Jesus Christ may grow. And so our trust in him is growing. Our belief in what he can do is growing. And so so usually God in, in... enlarges our belief by putting us through challenges. So generally, that's true. Generally, our faith grows as we hit things that only God can do. And so as a body of believers, expect to be hitting things that only God can do. And if we try and struggle and cry, we've been banging on walls, okay, that that will hurt fists, but it's not going to accomplish much. We, as a people of faith, are going to go to heaven and bang on that. Come to me. Make your request known to me. And those of you who ask believing will find answers. You will have it answered. And why is that? Because God can do anything. Because he can take our impossible, at least our steep climb, And he can make level paths for us. But we will know it's God. It's not because we have a hero. It's because God stood up. Now God very often picks people to stand up on account of him. Fair. But God needs to stand up for us. With the choice of a pastor and family. With the choice of uh, uh, giving opportunities. Because the things that we have in mind spiritually for this church and this community is beyond our current giving. So, Lord, how are you going to do that? Well, we'll see. We'll ask them, shall we? Lord, provide. Lord, this day, give us our daily bread. Give it to us, not because we deserve it, but because your kingdom needs it. Joy in the faith. There is true joy in walking with Christ through anything. The fact that we have him with us is huge. I do not know I am torn between the two. I desire to depart and be with Christ, which is better by far. But it is more necessary for you that I remain in the body. So let's look at our take home. It's more important that I'm with you, Paul says. So those of you that are in tough situations, your prayer isn't, Lord, get me out of this. Your prayer is, show your strength in this. That's your prayer. If he chooses to remove people or you from a circumstance, that's up to him. But in the meantime, Lord, help me. 
Help me grow them. Help me be you here. If there's going to be boasting, not boosting, but boosting your boasting in Jesus. And those of us who are part of the family can boost our boast. You can tell I thought I was quite clever putting that in there. But isn't that the reality? If I'm going to boast, I'm going to boast in Christ. And with people by my side like you guys, Paul is saying, I can continue doing that. It's fantastic. And I love this, that Paul is identifying his own act in it. I can, I can experience boosting my boasting because of me. So because of me, you're going to be stronger. You're going to be able to boast all the more. And that's why I think God has me here. And so you're saying that, Lord, I think you've got me here so that I've got people that need a boost. Their faith may be, may be staggering a little bit. You've got me here for that. Or here's the other thing. Lord, I'm staggering a little bit. I need to learn to lean on somebody. So that goes both ways. Boasting is boasting in Jesus and learning how to, how to do that regularly because of me. Paul says, because of me. And so my conclusion is, God wants me here. And that really is our conclusion today, because God wants me here. I've told you, I've, I've told you the story of me flipping a pastor off the backside of a motorcycle. And, and because I tried a jump that was impossible to make, even though I made it, just to be clear... I did make it. The pastor did not. He flew over me and lost all of his briefcase full of paper. And so as soon as I landed, I was very proud. And as soon as I saw him, I was very sorrowful. Because I didn't think he was going to get up again. He didn't move for a while. And one of the bystanders said, you've killed him. I didn't need to hear that. And then I heard somebody say, he's moving. And I'm going, great. My ministry saved. And I want to say this. My greatest lesson in most of life is that I make the biggest mistake when I forget there's people around me. I am way more mature because I'm recognizing that God has people around me and they matter. And I can't do anything and everything I want. Why is that? Because God has people watching me, participating with me. When I said I do at my, at my wedding, I lost any sense of independence. <laughs> but I tell you this, when our firstborn came along, I really lost it. I had made a perfect heart commitment to Dot. We verbalized it and signed it. And praise God, she's hung in there. <laughs> but when we had children, God said, you've lost your independence now. Truth is, when I received Christ at the age of 14, I lost my independence. I now became quite dependent on him and his strength and his discipline, and I gladly took it because life was ahead of me. And I can say this, I'm so happy that, that I have learned and I'm still learning how to grow in that independence from self and dependence on him. People, just because I'm here and happen to be practicing uh, pastoring this church doesn't mean I'm doing it alone. As soon as I signed and I said I will, I lost my independence. I now serve you. To my strength, I must say so that our joy may be full, and that will continue, whoever God brings on staff, that's the perspective. The truth is, you serve me too. And I want to say this in conclusion, I cannot be the Rob Hayes that God intended me to be without you. There is this interdependence that God has, this fellowship of believers, 
that's massive. With that in mind, let's pray and have food. Father, we're so grateful for your goodness and your faithfulness, uh, making us faithful through the strength of your spirit and by the prayer of the saints. We pray that you might continue to keep us fortified as we lift other believers before you. And as, receive, as we receive the answers to prayer because of the prayer of others in our lives, Lord, we are positioned perfectly to impact for the gospel. In Jesus' name, amen.